Hello everyone and welcome to an incredible game that was played yesterday. It was the uh, opening ceremony of the Grand Chester that will be played in Croatia starting today. At starting today we will have three, uh, three rounds of Rapid. Of course then we will have three days of Rapid, nine rounds overall and then two days of Blitz uh, which means uh, 18 rounds of Blitz. Uh, but before that there was an opening ceremony. There was uh, a simultaneous exhibition where all of the players of the Grand Chester took on, uh, I don't know how many players uh, there were but usually it's somewhere between 20 and 40 uh, but it's not uh, uh, the usual type of uh, a simultaneous exhibition where you will have let's say Magnus Carlsen he will uh, hold a simultaneous exhibition against 40 players here all of the participants of the Grand Chester here that are playing in Zagreb are simultaneously holding a simultaneous exhibition against all of them. So Magnus will make the first move, then Alireza will make the second, Anna will make the third move, and then they, they just walk around and then uh, they make all of the moves. And joining them, and here, okay, I'm, I'm just going to show you uh, who the players are that were uh, participating. So uh, Yanni Pomnici, Alireza Firuja, Fabiana Caruana, Jan Shishtov Duda, Richard Rapport, Magnus Carlsen, uh, Ivan Šaric, Gukes, Konstantin Lupin, Pulescu and Vishwanathan Anand, uh, so the 10 of them were playing uh, the simultaneous exhibition simultaneously against uh, everyone participating, and also they were joined by none other than former world champion Gary Kasparov, uh, as he is... Uh well, whenever there's a chess event in Croatia, you can expect Kasparov to be there. Uh, so that's why I, I didn't write Magnus Carlsen below his photo. It's actually the Grand Chester team and Gary Kasparov. And of course, their combined rating is well over 9,000. Uh, and I, I would put more photos there, but I only have uh, room for one. So I put Magnus as he is the highest rated one. Uh, so uh, that being said, we are going to check out the game. It's, it's really a spectacular game because, uh, well, uh, you might not expect it, but Ivano actually defeated defeated them. He won this game brilliantly with the black pieces and uh, okay, uh, he's been uh, playing chess for quite a while. He's the under 11 uh, Croatian uh, champion and uh, he he's an incredible uh, player. Currently his uh, rating is uh, 1935. Uh, he said himself that he feels that he could maybe uh, get it uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to be a bit higher and w once you see his play uh, you will definitely believe that. So yeah, he plays, uh, I've seen an interview with him, uh, he says that he plays pretty much uh, from the time he wakes up, he even plays a little bit uh, and studies before school. Uh, he says he's a little bit addicted to chess, but that he loves it and that he will uh, probably, you know, uh, enjoy it for as long as possible. And here, okay, uh, if you guys want, uh, this is him. Uh, this is him last year uh, in the opening of the Grand Chester. He made the first move uh, for, for the Magnus game here. You have Gukesh uh, making a, a move against him. There you see the setting of the simultaneous exhibition. There is Nepo uh, also making a move against him. Uh, there's, uh, okay, there's Magnus Carlsen also making a move against him. So, like I said, all of the players of the Grand Chester plus Gary Kaspar, there's even Sharic uh, uh, also. I mean, this could even be the end of the game, but no, uh, I think it's actually the first move. Uh, so there's uh, Konstantin Lupulescu, uh, there you have it, uh, Alireza also making the first move, Ivano preparing to play Rook 8 to D8, as you'll see in the game. Anand uh, also shaking his hand, um, uh, finally reaching the board. So uh, w whenever the player reaches the board and they uh, still haven't made a move, they shake hands, of course, uh, uh, and then they make the first move. There's Kasparov. Uh, so yeah, everyone is there. It's going to be it's gonna be a great game. Obviously, Kasparov made the first move. So let's check it out. Quite the game. Uh, as you as you'll see so uh the the grand Chester team has the white pieces and they open uh, with pawn to d4 uh kasparov was the one who opened i believe as we've seen now in the photos uh we have knight to f6 by ivano pawn to c4 e6 and now knight to f3 going for the anti uh, Nimzo, and usually when you see an anti Nimzo, it will probably just transpose into some sort of a, a d5 knight to c3 and bishop to b4. Dragos in defense, which is perfectly fine for both white and black. But Ivano uh, plays the more active, uh, the Bogo Indian defense, which is like the Nimzo. Only white, of course, is not forced to play knight to c3 here, which was uh, which would transpose into a knight to f3 Nimzo. White plays knight b to d2, and this is what the Grand Chester team goes for. Uh, we have pawn to b6 and now pawn to a3, chasing away the bishop, and now just bishop captures on d2. Uh, there are some games where bishop to e7 was played, but it's extremely rare. 
uh, for example, uh, Jobava played it against Karyakin, but he lost the game. Uh, Short played it against Caruana, he also lost the game. It's incredibly rare. So Bishop captures on d2 is the main line. We have Bishop captures, and now uh, the top moves for black are Bishop to b7. This is the, the absolute top move. Okay, h6 has been played quite a lot. Knight to e4 is a known move, uh, but uh, Ivano plays pawn to a5. And here you see just how much he understands chess. He fights against white's b4 move, and that is, uh, that is absolutely absolutely essential here it has been played before uh, only a handful of times uh, you know in top t in top level competition black never actually won a game playing this move last time uh, Korchner uh, played it against Gelfand in Odessa in 2007 and he lost that game but okay let's see uh, what uh, Ivano had in mind obviously he prepared something very rare uh, for the Grand Chester team uh, we have pawn to g3 makes sense uh, of course they want to uh, think out to their bishop on this long diagonal Ivano does the same bishop to g2 and now there is a game where castles was played but here we have pawn d6 and it is now as of move 8 that we have a completely new game so here we have castles knight b to d7 nicely continuing development we have rook to c1 and ivano castles we have rook to e1 and queen to e7 now developing the queen preparing to bring the rooks into the game we have bishop to c3 also nicely putting the bishop on this diagonal and now rook a to d8 uh, makes sense the queen is still on d1 if ivano plays the, let's say e5 then the position opens up this will be very good for him uh, but of course, uh, the players uh, do not allow this. They play pawn to d5. And now uh, Ivano has to make a choice. Uh, does he go knight to c5? Does he go knight to e5? Does he go knight to e4? Does he capture on d5? What's the idea behind captures on d5? Why did uh, why did the, the Grandchester team even play this d5 move? Well, the point is, after he captures on d5, as Ivano did play this, knight to h4, simply opening up the light square bishop's diagonal, and now you cannot capture another pawn, the bishop on b7 would hang. So how can you continue this? Well, Ivano actually, uh, very cool-headed, uh, plays the absolute best move, plays queen to e6. He says, I will just defend my pawn on d5, and you show me why this is so good. And here comes the first imprecision of the Grand Chester team. And here, the problem, I believe, for them... Uh, is that they were playing, all of them were playing one game, so they couldn't really decide on a plan, and Ivano was playing his own game, so he uh, uh, pretty much played the absolute best move uh, for, for the entire game. And here, the best move for uh, for the Grand Chester team would just be to trade everything. Bishop captures on f6, and then at some point you will capture the c7 pawn. That's pretty much it. Knight captures on f6, c captures on d5, bishop captures on d5, bishop uh, first rook captures on c7, of course. Bishop captures on g2, rook king captures or knight captures, then rook to c8. And at some point, let's say queen to c2, you double up here. But now knight to d5 will force a trade on the c file, captures, captures, and Ivano would win the c file, but equal material. Material. Uh, it's pretty much uh, an, an equal game. Okay, he does have the uh, the isolated D pawn, but nothing uh, really happening uh, here. So it, it would be perfectly fine. However, after this queen to e6 move, the Grandchester team decided for queen to c2, and now he just goes knight to e4. And here, black is already better. There's no way to, uh, for white to uh, get his pawn back, and there's no way to actually create some sort of an active counterplay. Uh, here they played C captures on D5, Bishop captures on D5, and now uh, we have Bishop to D4. Here, uh, how do you continue? You're down a pawn, you don't have active play, the uh, Bishop here is suffering on C3, the Knight can always capture it. Uh, however you play this, Ivana will just straight down and be up a pawn. Even with the absolute best move B4 from White, which I know is always the best move, let's say captures, captures, Knight captures on C3, Queen captures, Bishop captures on G2, Knight captures, now pawn to C5, uh, Ivana will create a pass pawn and uh, he will be the one pushing for the win here. So bishop to d4 was played, not allowing this trade, but now Ivano just plays pawn to c5. He pushes the bishop back, and now while you could push the bishop back right away, I mean, no uh, self-respecting grandmaster will repeat the move uh, and go back to where he came from, uh, they uh, uh, try complicating. They play pawn to f3, and now Ivano just goes back. Knight e to f6, they also go back, bishop to c3, and now bishop to b3, grabbing that uh, uh, b3 d1 diagonal, forcing the white queen to go back. We have queen to b1, and now pawn to d5. Now pawn to d4 is coming, and uh, how are you stopping those pawns? Uh, they play pawn to e3, which stops pawn to d4, but now pawn to g6. We have pawn to f4. This pawn to f4 move um, 
Uh, okay, it's it's not a move you want to play, but what else is there for white? Uh, do, 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 do they even have a move? He completely paralyzed uh, uh, the entire board. So they play pawn to f4, this opens up uh, this bishop's diagonal, but they also weaken the e4 and g4 squares, uh, and Ivano immediately uh, plants a knight on e4. So knight e4, and now, while well, you could go for something like knight to f3 and try to hold a passive position, they go for the attack. Pawn to f5, and Ivano just ignores it. He plays queen to e7. Uh, very nicely done. We have rook to f1. Now with ideas of maybe you can uh, capture the knight here and then play pawn to f6 and then maybe somehow checkmate the black king. Uh, Ivano just plays knight d to f6. Uh, he doesn't allow that and he asks what, what are you playing now? So they played f captures on g6 and well you could play something safe like h captures on g6. Ivano goes for the more active approach. f captures on g6. Now he opens up the f file for his rook and uh, he asks what uh, what will they even play at this point? I'm sure. Uh, okay, he was uh, probably under the impression that he was playing against the absolute best players in the world but uh, on the other hand uh, I'm pretty sure he felt very very confident in his position here and now again uh, best uh, for white is to trade here for example bishop captures rook captures rook captures uh, queen captures and now rook to f1 let's say queen to e6 but still no problems for black Bla black will still just continue pushing the pawns and not a lot for white to uh, look for here. So instead they tried keeping the tension, they played rook to f4 and now we have rook d to e8. Now the e3 pawn is a weakness, once the knight moves how will uh, the players uh, wielding the white pieces defend this? So they play queen to d3 but now just bishop to c4, pushing the white queen further back, we have queen to d1 and now finally eliminating this powerful bishop which is pretty much white's only good piece. Uh, knight captures on c3, rook captures and now uh, look at this, pawn to a4. Now this is a, a true, uh, true tall move. This is a really a, a beautiful attacking move. Uh, you know, someone who would want to slow play this would probably go b5 and then a4, but not Ivano. He is a true attacker and he goes a4 right away. And now the idea is, okay, why, why not just capture the a4 pawn? Uh, what is... Um, uh, what's his plan? Well, his plan is that he wants to play g5, but you can't play it right away. The problem is the knight can come to f5 with tempo, attack the queen, then you can just move the rook, and also you would weaken your king side, and you don't want the white queen having, um, uh, well, uh, such an easy way of reaching the king side. So the idea is that uh, uh, after pawn to a4, well, you could capture it, queen captures on a4, uh, he would play queen to e6, not allow knight to f5 to come with tempo, now he's preparing g5, and it's not going to be... Uh, it's not going to be easy uh, playing this. It would be incredibly difficult to actually pick up this pawn. Uh, it's even hard to find a move here for white. You probably have to go back or, or something. You would have to, okay, you pick it up a pawn. Maybe you give up the exchange. Uh, hard to find an active uh, move for white here. So instead, after this a4 move, they decided not to touch the pawn. They played knight to f3, and now Ivana just plays bishop to b3. Continues um, mounting the pressure. We have queen to e1, and now, of course, pawn to d4. The queen on e1 is undefended. Okay, it's defended by the knight, but it's the d1 square is also being attacked twice. So rook to c1, and now queen captures on e3. No funny business here. Ivana is already up a pawn. Now he wins another one, and he is, of course, uh, well, very confident that he will win this. Queen captures, we have not D captures. You could play D captures, but uh, you already have the D1 square covered, so it makes sense to keep the pawn on the D file. So rook captures on E3, and now knight to D2, trying to get rid of this uh, nasty bishop. Uh, we have rook to e2. Okay, uh, talk, uh, speaking of nasty bishops, you guys requested in the previous video where I uh, said unleash the bish, that uh, I should make some unleash the bish merchandise. I actually made some. It's the first link in the description below. Do check it out if you uh, if you would like to acquire some unleash the bish merch. Uh, I will only keep it up for a month, so uh, you know, starting August, it will be it will be gone. Uh, rook to e2 was played, and now knight captures on b3. We have a captures on b3, and now rook c to f1 doubling up on the f file putting pressure on the knight on f6 uh, but here imagine this even though it seems like there's so much to play for probably you guys are expecting okay 
uh, Ivano uh, he does have a better position. He's up two pawns, but he's playing an end game against these monsters, these uh, 20, 2750, 2800 players. Surely that there's no way for him to actually win this game. Well, no, he played king to g7, and he was in this position on move 36 that the Grandchester team resigned, uh, as there truly is nothing more to be done here. Their position is so helpless that they decided not even to continue here, uh, as, uh, well, it's best for me to just show you why it's uh, why it's uh, so helpless. Now, th there's no good defense against uh, moves like uh, C C for C3, B5. Those pawns are just marching forward. And if you try to even look for an active plan with white, let's say you play pawn to G4, you want to chase away the knights to maybe do something, uh, G5 can be played. And okay, let's say rook to f5, pawn to h6. Okay, white wants to uh, break through. You have to play active moves. Let's say h4. G captures on h4. You can even play g5. Let's say h captures rook captures. Now, okay, you've um, uh, gained some activity here. But after king to h6 and now rook g to f5, the problem is you can even ignore the knight. You can play rook captures on b2. That's just how much Ivano's position is better. And even after this peace sacrifice, let's say rook captures, rook captures, rook captures, and king to g5, there's no way to stop all of these pawns. Let's say rook captures on b6, d3 is coming. Now, let's say king to f1, you try to bring the king to help out, c4 is coming. You play rook to c6 to stop the c pawn, now rook to c2, now the b and d pawns are coming. If you play rook to b6, now pawn to b2 is coming. Now, if you play bishop to f3, or really doesn't matter, the king cannot escape from the back rank, you will play pawn to c3, oh, sorry, not pawn to d2, pawn to c3. Uh, if bishop to e4, doesn't matter, rook to c1, check. If king f2, you will play pawn to d2. So the, the pawns are unstoppable. It's merely a matter of how you want to win this. Uh, pretty much every move is winning here for black. Let's say rook to d6, d1 uh, becomes a queen, you will have to give up your rook. Now it's rook against bishop and two connected fast pawns. And after something like king to e3, you will play h3. Even the h pawn marches forward. Let's say pawn to a4, you will play uh, rook to d2 and after something like a5 you will play pawn to h2 after a6 you will bring another queen into the game let's say bishop captures now you will play b1 queen and now of course you get checkmate at a7 and queen to d3 will be checkmate so this is only one of the uh, ways you, you could win this end game but uh, the the Grandchester players of course realized that, that there is no point in playing this so they just resigned this and what a I mean what a badass way for young Ivano to, uh, to, to force a resignation from the, the absolute best players in the world just King g7 he says my knight is defended you, you have nothing here and uh, I mean uh, they resigned. So yeah, uh, I mean, uh, first I thought, okay, it's probably, uh, I mean, uh, sometimes it happens that, uh, you know, the underdog defeats the Grandmaster uh, in a simultaneous exhibition, but here he did not just beat them, he absolutely crushed them. They made two slight imprecisions uh, uh, throughout the entire game. So like we mentioned, okay, he prepared this uh, A5 line, which is a bit rare. Uh, and okay, he uh, obviously had some ideas of what he wanted to play, but here... After, after they attempted this d5 breakthrough and knight to h4, after queen to e6, they just uh, didn't find a way on how to continue. Bishop captures on f6 is the only way which gives them an active position, but after queen to c2 uh, and uh, this knight to e4 move, it was just Ivano for the entire game. So there, there was no way of actually reclaiming that pawn back, and he just squeezed, squeezed, squeezed uh, until they, uh, they resigned. I mean, there was... Uh, uh, he he played this this game like like uh, like uh, like a merger of uh, like Tal and Petrosian, uh, you know, and Fisher, which, which is basically Magnus Carlsen himself. So I mean, uh, absolute absolutely spectacular. After a king to g7, they resigned, and uh, I, I think this is one victory that Ivano will remember for a long time. And I'm sure you guys agree uh, agree with him that maybe uh, he could even improve his rating to be a bit higher than 1935. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. We'll be following what happens in the Grand Chester Croatia being played in Zagreb. If some of you are there in Zagreb, I, I don't mind. It's like 60 kilometers from where I live. If, if you guys want to, you know, play some games, take some photos, I don't mind uh, showing up, you know, maybe having a beer or two. If you're there, you know, just send me an email. Uh, if there, there are like a, a, a bunch of you interested, I, I will definitely come.
Uh, so yeah, once again, really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you would uh, enjoy purchasing the uh, Unleash the Bish merch, it will be the first link in the description below. And yeah, we'll be following uh, Ivano's progress. Uh, I mean, uh, if you can do this against the absolute best elite in the world, definitely the sky is the limit. So very much looking forward to uh, where it takes him. Uh, I would like to thank James Eugene Cashman, Josh Stanton, and not complace bulletchestthriller.com, Paul Miller uh, for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As you usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and i will see you soon continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world so thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day